I watched the new Kevin Hart docu-series on Netflix. I'll tell you what I think about it next. What's poppin' is your boy Mike Powers. Thank you so much for clicking this video and let's get right into it. Kevin Hart has released a docu-series. I wanna say it's six parts. I have not been able to view them all. I have viewed five of them. And so I wanted to talk to y'all about this today because you may or may not know I am not a Kevin Hart fan. That may be a little bit controversial for some people, but in my opinion, what I'm getting from Kevin Hart on stage as a comedian is jokes about being short and scared much like the character he plays in movies. Now I know he goes into detail about his family, his upbringing, his father, his children and whatnot. But I think Kevin Hart in terms of a comedian is just, for my taste, he, he's just a guy that's got a lot of antics. I'm a Richard Pryor guy. His jokes really, really made me laugh. George Carlin told a story and there was a punchline. I know that Kevin is a writer as well, that he writes his own jokes, that he does tell stories. They just don't land for me. And that's just my personal personal opinion. And I've been saying this for a long time. I actually have been more harsh off camera to Kevin Hart than I have ever been on camera because I'm a real hater when it comes to Kevin Hart. I don't like his I don't like his movies one bit. I think he plays the same exact character. You couldn't pay me enough money to go watch Ride Along. I'm sorry. You just, you couldn't pay me enough money to go watch that movie. When I saw the previews, I knew exactly what I was going to get. When I see him paired up with The Rock, it's fucking Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger all over again and twins is what the fuck it is. I don't like that shit. That's just my personal taste. You might think I'm bugging. If you do put that in the comment section, please. Let's talk about why you think Kevin Hart is actually funny. I Patrice O'Neal, hilarious. And there's a lot of comedians I like. Kevin Hart's not one of them. But when I saw the previews for what was to come with this Netflix docu-series, what they're calling it, I said, this shit looks actually interesting. I love if somebody's able to tell a story, whether it be a, a filmmaker, a rapper, a singer, an author. If you could tell me a good story, I'm good. I'm ready. And it looked like whoever was putting this docu-series together whoever the director was or whatever. It seemed like they was doing a good job of telling this story and I wanted to be involved. So I turned it on. I started watching it a couple days ago and was pleasantly surprised. I had a very hard time hating on Kevin Hart while watching this docu-series, while watching this series on Netflix. And I'm gonna tell you why. This man loves his family. He loves his kids, loves his daughter, loves his son. He got a new son too. So he loves both of his sons, but he's really a family man. You see things like him wanting to pull a splinter out of his daughter's foot and she's giving him all kind of hell, won't let him do it. But he's so concerned as a father, he don't want his, his baby girl to be hurt. And he takes him shopping and, and he's working out with his son. Kevin Hart is really big in the fitness game, by the way. One of the things you realize, which is take me on another tangent here, it shows his whole crew and most of them are comedians, but there's one guy, his name's Boss. That's what they call him, big dude. Look like he, he could play linebacker for the Philadelphia Eagles. That's part of his crew now. He pays this guy who has his own fitness business. He's the CEO of his own fitness business. Guy's built like a brick house you know, cock D's, pause. And Kevin works out with this guy every day or for a significant time throughout the week, Kevin Hart is with this dude. When you see the transformation of the small, skinny Kevin Hart to somebody that's a little bit more in shape, I believe it's due to this guy, Boss, who we will meet, who you will meet in the docu-series. That guy is part of Kevin's camp. That guy's on the road with Kevin. That guy is confiding in Kevin. Kevin is confiding in him. They brothers. He brought this guy on stage. When he brought the whole crew on stage to say, hey, yo, this is my whole crew, that guy was there too. Kevin Hart, in terms of being a, a family man, not just to, with his blood relatives, but with those men around him that he calls his brothers, that was so impressive. I couldn't hate on this. I started liking Kevin Hart and I, I never disliked him as a person, but I felt bad about myself for hating on this guy's career because his grind is real. He has studied the craft of comedy, regardless of whether or not I think it's something that I would enjoy. He has studied this craft. He took it serious. He tells a story in this docuseries, and I don't want to give too much away because I want you to go watch this for yourself. But he talks about how he told his mom and dad that he was going to be a comedian. 
And they just looked at him and they laughed and said, nah, I don't see it. Don't seem, you don't, you're not funny. And what Kevin said in the docuseries, which I thought was very interesting and right on point, is that people have an idea of what they think a comedian is. It might be just like this show. People think they have an idea what a comedian is, or they have an idea what they think a good internet show is. And then people think of, in Kevin's case, Richard Pryor and Eddie Murphy and all these other guys. And when they look at Kevin, they don't see that. So they can't see the vision. It's like some people, when they watch this video, I don't I name whoever, and they think of that person. And that's what an internet show should look like. That's what a YouTube show should look like. But they can't see the vision. It's not gonna always look like this forever. We evolve, we get better, we grow. The smart people study the craft. I'm studying this shit now. Kevin studied it. Uh, I forget the comedian who picked Kevin up, who told Kevin to come to New York. And Kevin took that man's advice and found out what it really took to go from a guy that was just telling jokes to a guy that was telling stories. Cause the guy said, Kevin, I like your jokes. I think you're funny, but I don't know nothing about you after listening to an hour of your set or however long it was. And that's interesting. He didn't know who Kevin was after watching his comedy. He was giving Kevin a gem and Kevin took that shit and ran with it. They show him in this docuseries with the guy who basically changed the, tra the trajectory of his comedic career. And they're in a bar after Kevin had gone to New York to do a show in a small club. This is after Kevin's really been blown up and is really famous and got money, 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 like mega Kevin Hart famous. I went back to this club in New York. He's sitting at a table with Chris Rock and this, this I, forgive me for not knowing this other comedian's name and just some luminaries in the industry. And you, you see Kevin Hart as this guy that came from nothing. And these guys that he looked up to now he's sitting at the table with them as equals, not only equals, he is the biggest comedian on the planet. Much props to Kevin Hart for coming from the gutter, coming from a horrible upbringing where his father was not available to him. People didn't believe in him and he made this thing happen and he continues to work. This guy's work ethic is ridiculous. Kevin Hart is a mogul in the making. Kevin Hart is working long hours at his production company, his radio show. He got internet stuff that he's doing out here. He's hooking up with, with, with Chase Bank, I think it was. He brought his fitness homeboy in with him, splitting the profits with the homie. Kevin Hart's doing big things and he talks about how he's on this road to becoming a billionaire and how much work you got to do to get there. And I respect it. Everything about this made me respect Kevin Hart more, except for when he gave the excuse about why he cheated on his wife. Now they go into detail about his affair with who I don't know, but apparently he was videotaped in a compromising situation with a female, it hit the internet. His wife, Aniko, I believe is the pronunciation of her name. She saw it, broke the young girl's heart. And she goes through this pain on camera. You see her talk about it. You see her crying about it. You see, you almost see it in real time because the, he already had the camera crew with him when this thing popped off. He was already documenting his life when this thing happened, I guess, unless they did a fantastic edit, who knows? But to me, it looked like they was going through this in real time and they was filming it as it happened, some of it. And he had to get his shit back right with his wife. He said he was in the middle of shooting the movie Night, Night School when the news broke. So it was, a, it was a crazy time for him to have to go through something like that while you're working on such a big project and your wife is at home hurting and you're on set having to do this movie. But the excuse that he gave for cheating on his wife was that his boys wasn't around. So you have to understand the dynamic. Again, his boys was not around. You have to understand the dynamic of Kevin Hart's relationship with his friends and he calls them his brothers. These are a group of mostly comedians that Kevin Hart kind of came up with. Some, one of the guys was, uh, was homeless. And one of his, one of his other friends said, yo, homeboy over here is homeless. And they said, they said, let's get this guy some money. So Kevin made that guy an MC for his show, put him on stage, get some money in this man's pocket. A lot of these dudes don't have good relationships with their fathers. And so that's how they bonded. And of course, comedy. And so that circle is real tight. And the story goes that Kevin Hart one day was going to Vegas, maybe the next day. And he called one of his homeboys on the phone and said, yo, let's go to Vegas. And homie said, nah, I'm, you know, I'm married. I just can't up and leave, bro. I'm, wifey ain't going to be going for that for me just to up and leave and go to Vegas tomorrow, which is understandable, right? Whose wife is about to put up with that shit? 
And he was told no by damn near his whole crew because they're grown men. They just can't up and go like that. And that's when he got in trouble. That's when he was left to his own devices, when his circle was not there to tell him, no, don't do this. And this is what Kevin is saying in this docu-series. My, my, my homies wasn't there. There was nobody there to tell me no, to say, tap me. Usually it's somebody there to tap me on the shoulder and say, Kev, don't do it. But nobody was there. Not a good excuse. Not a good excuse. Because we grown now. We pushing 40 and we have to know what's right and what's wrong. It's not up to me to tell you whether or not you should step out on your woman. That's not my business. I'm saying you, your woman and God. But if you're going to call this a mistake, Mr. Hart, just say what it is that, you know, your loins got the best of you. You was out kicking it, having a good time. And you did something that you thought you were going to get away with. You got caught. Being caught is the thing that makes motherfuckers sorry more than anything. He may have even been sorry it, it, internally if he didn't get caught. But he wasn't going to be that motherfucking sorry. Let's be honest. He wasn't going to be that sorry. But when the shit hit the fan, yeah, you sorry to the motherfucker because it's all about to go down the fucking tubes. Let's talk about this on a level that makes some sense, Kevin Hart. Let's be real about it. That's why you was really tripping because you got caught. And to her credit, she said, I'm, I'm all about forgiveness. I'm going to give this man another chance. And she said, this one, two times is okay. But the third time, then you're out. She said, I said, no. so he's, he's cheated twice already. Has he? I don't know. And then, of course, websites like Bossip and all these other websites are quoting her as saying, I'm happy he cheated on me. I'm happy Kevin cheated on me. Well, essentially, she did say that shit. <laughs> she said it, essentially she was saying that makes their relationship has made their relationship stronger. She happy that he had that moment so he could know what the mistake was and he could grow from it. Props to her. What she's saying is true too. dudes mature at a much later age in life than women. It takes a long time for us to get to the point that we could say, I'm not going to do this to her because this is going to hurt her feelings. It's going to break her heart. Sometimes it takes for a man to get his heart broken before he realizes what it really feels like to have your heart broken. And so it just takes us a long time. We king of the jungle. We go do what we want to do. God made our bodies like this to just go attack and hunt and conquer. Excuse the word attack. I don't mean it like that, but you know, it's a lot of factors that go into being a man that could look at a woman and say, mm, I'm not doing that tonight. I have a wife. He hadn't gotten there yet. So props to his wife for, for giving him that chance to turn his life around in terms of being the man that he should be being faithful and being a family man that we know that Kevin Hart wants to be. And he is a great family man and he works hard and he's highly intelligent. He's not stupid. So my takeaway from the Kevin Hart documentary or docu-series is that I'm going to start rooting for this guy more now because I've learned something about his life. And Kevin Hart, that was strategic. That was strategic. You knew what you was doing. You knew that if people saw a softer side of you, that this was going to make more fans for you and great marketing on his part. <laughs> Great marketing on his part. I mean, this man is trying to make a billion. Go get it, bruh. Do what you got to do. But then there's very something, something very disturbing about what happened during this docuseries. And some of you may have heard about this before and forgot it. I did. I forgot. And then they just brought it back to life for me. Y'all like this little jacket I got? Fuck it. No, old school junk. That's how I'm doing it. Sidebar. So the video of Kevin and this young lady getting it in that was recorded surreptitiously without Kevin's <laughs> surreptitiously without his knowledge. Right? Same shit. That video was supposedly shot by one member of his crew who tried to extort him with that fucking video. Now, we talked about the dynamic of how these dudes is really tight. They share everything together. Kev makes sure all these dudes are taken care of. He says in the documentary, these guys is well paid. And you haven't heard nothing come out of that camp where motherfuckers leaking in terms of saying foul shit about, oh, this is what Kevin do. Kevin the asshole. Kevin the deep. You don't see, you don't, you don't hear none of that. So that camp was tight. It is tight. The, the cops came to Kevin and said, you know where that video came from? Where? Your boy. Your boy. Johnny. Kevin didn't want to say the dude's name during the documentary, but they show who the guy was earlier. And then they showed his face and everything. When they got accused, the boy's name is Johnny. This guy wasn't necessarily an inner, inner, inner circle crew member, but he was really close to that crew. I think he was, was he a barber or some shit? 
he was paid well too. He wasn't even on the road and shit, but he was getting paid. He was on the road in one clip they showed. They all went to the store and they all bought Versace shirts, which they were all ugly, except for this one black one, black and gold, but it had a pink collar. I wouldn't have fucked with that one. But the rest of them Versace shirts was just whatever. But they had a Versace night where all of those comics that ride with Kevin put on Versace and went on stage. And that guy was on the road with them that night. His name is Johnny. Johnny. And did he set him up with the girl too? Because they didn't talk about that yet. As far as I know, did he bring that chick to Kevin specifically to set Kevin up? I don't know. But that guy was in the closet recording shit. Then he sent Kevin an email with the video saying, I need $10 million. He clearly didn't identify himself as, hey, I'm Johnny. I'm your homeboy. I need this money. It was He was trying to come off as somebody else. How hurtful is that? How hurtful is that? That your own homeboy would set you up like that. That you was already paying him and that he needed to come to you to try to get $10 million. What the fuck you trying to do? You riding with Kevin fucking Hart. I don't know what you making. I said if the motherfucker was making 30000 a year, nigga, you was doing good. All you got to do is cut this man's hair and kick it with him. And let's say you could get 30. I'm not saying it was fucking 30. It could have been 60, could have been 80, could have been 150000 I don't know. But even if it was only 30 and all you had to do was cut this man's hair and hang out and you want to get 10 million? Why? Because this man's house so big, his car so fly, doors lift up. You jealous? And you think you should have that? Does Kevin use this statement as well when he says everybody wants to be famous, but nobody wants to put in the work? So if you mad that this man and worked his ass off and got to where he got and you want a piece, you jealous of the marble fucking floors, man? That's what you're doing to your fucking homie? You fucking snakes. Let this be a lesson to people who think they got fucking friends out here. You got to pass a certain test with me. You got to pass certain, you got to jump through certain hoops with me just to be my friend. Let me tell you something. If you don't take care of your kids, I don't kick it with you. Somebody going to get mad at me, but I got a, I, I had a friend that had multiple children and somebody accused him of being a father of a baby. He said, I ain't the father of this baby. And I said, okay, that's what you say. Cause I've seen him with his other kids who was living with him and he was a decent father. So he said, I'm gonna show you this picture. And I'm, when I tell you that this baby look exactly like this nigga, a baby version of this nigga, this nigga, I'm talking about his light skin. He had what they call good hair. <laughs> he had, he was an African-American dude that didn't have a typical African-American dude nose. It wasn't like this fat motherfucker right here. And I looked at that baby, I said, baby look just like you, bro. What the fuck you mean? That ain't my baby. That ain't my fucker. I had to stop kicking it with this motherfucker. No, you my homie. I'm with you. We at the club. We at the spot. We in the streets, whatever. How you going to look out for me? How you got my back? You only got your own son back. Preach, nigga. Tabernacle. Fuck you mean? You got to jump through so many hoops. You can't be phony if you're going to be my motherfucker friend. If you snake me at all, we done. Shit. If you act funny on the text message side for too long, I'm not going to kick it with you. I only got a couple friends. But if I, if I text you and then you're not texting the nigga back or some shit, I'm asking you a question or some shit. And you act, if you, I'm not doing that, bro. We not fucking friends. We not friends. And I don't even ask my friends for shit. I don't ask you to come save me or put no money in my goddamn pocket, but I ask you to be honest. And here's another thing about my friends. If I got a problem with this nigga over here and you cool with that nigga, nigga, you got to choose. Fuck you mean? Some people are like, he petty. No, I'm not petty. I'm King Petty. Put me in a category with the rest of these fucking hating ass motherfuckers. I'm at the, I'm at the top. I'm the king of fucking petty. I got beef with that nigga and you kicking it with that nigga. We can't kick it. You good? Ain't no hard fucking feelings. But if some shit jump off between me and that guy, I don't know who the fuck side you on. I don't know if you a double agent taking information back and forth, nigga. We not doing that. So let this be a lesson to y'all fucking niggas that think y'all got fucking friends. These niggas ain't your friends. And so Kevin's crew said that shit fucked everything up. It will be, it will be no new motherfuckers coming in. And that's sad for Kevin. They said no new people coming into this clique. The folks you see here around Kevin now, that's who we rocking with. No new faces, which is fucked up because Kevin was the type of dude where he would see some potential when you, he bring you into his crew. If he connected with you, if he thought your shit was on some, on the right shit, if you were studying the craft, if you was, if you had a grind, you had a hustle, you had a drive, you had a determination. If you was funny, if y'all could relate on some level that he met you, Kevin Hart might bring you into his fucking circle, not no more because of Johnny who wanted to get 10 million. Hey, Johnny, how you living now? Bitch ass nigga, you know, and Kevin won't say it on camera, but I'm going to say it for Kevin and the crew. Fuck you, Johnny. But the documentary is fire. I like it a lot. 
I have a newfound respect for Kevin Hart. And I think I touched on every single topic I wanted to touch on when it comes to this documentary. I advise you to go check it out. It's called Kevin Hart, Don't Fuck This Up. It's a phenomenal watch. It's binge worthy. You will not be disappointed. And I might have to, the movies, I stand by what the fuck I said, garbage. Him being on stage, don't like it. But I respect the man's hustle. And when I'm out here in these streets, when I'm in my real life, I will refrain from further hating on this black man who got everything he got through sheer hard work and determination. I'm going to watch part six tonight. I'm on the edge of my seat, wondering what the fuck is going to happen next, just like I am with Empire. And so they done did a good thing with this. They done did a phenomenal piece of art. They done put some great content on Netflix. Huh. <laughs> I just said Netflix. <laughs> Netflix, and I'm here for it. Kevin Hart, much power to you. Salute, even though your comedy is not my cup of tea. I thank you for clicking this video. If you do like the content, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And make sure you set your notifications because when I go live, I want to see you there. I'm taking phone calls now, and I do respond to the chat. We in here tearing it up and kicking it, and I would love to have you there. Until next time, I'm Mike Powers. I'm out.